Hello, overclockers. I'm Aper, king of overclocking, jack of all trades, and master of every single one of them. After that amazing 5090 video starring myself, I thought it'd only be fair if I'd give you another amazing insight into the new RTX 5080 GPU by NVIDIA. So, in this video, what I'm going to be covering is the 5080's performance when run at stock, performance when overclocked, the power draw, the cooling, and a little bit about the aesthetics of the card and what I think of the overall package. So, is this card a tombstone pile driver or a buried alive match? Watch the rest of the video to find out. Now, let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, let's look at the design of this Asus Tough OC 5080, which I used in all my testing. This card itself, if you look at it here, you can see it's a full three slot design and it's a very beefy cooler. As it's become traditional now, it's got backplate on the back of the card, uh, again, to slick heat away from the back and ensure rigidity of the PCB. The design of this card here is obviously a triple fan cooler with a vapor chill style design or vapor chamber design and you can see the heat pipes here through the cooler. The overall aesthetic of the card, as you can see, is very black which is good as far as I'm concerned. And there's not too much graphics on there that you, you need to worry about if you want to integrate this into any system. Because of the color scheme, it will work well. Obviously the RGB then, if you wish to install software that's probably bloating up your system uh, and enable all that, you can then color scheme with the rest of the system. As far as overall cooling performance goes, you've got a dual BIOS, which gives you a silent fan profile and then a more performance fan profile. The switch for that being here on the top of the card. In this testing, all the time I ran the performance profile for obvious reasons, I want to show how good the card can be, not how it doesn't sound very loud. All this uh, being said, through my all my benchmarks, the maximum temperature under load with the stock uh, fan profile on the performance BIOS gave uh, 62.4 degrees stock on the actual core and 64 degrees on the memory, which is very, very good performance indeed. Uh, and you'd expect that from a full three slot cooler on a card of this size and a card of this stature. The card overall wasn't pulling a crazy amount of power, certainly nothing near a 5090, so again, you would expect the cooler to be totally fine. The noise of this card coming from the cooler when you maxed out everything in the performance mode was fairly silent. I mean, not totally silent, but you certainly couldn't hear the three fans running whilst you're running it you know, through benchmarks above the sound of the three fans that had on the AIO. So would they make the sound of your system louder by installing this GPU? Probably not. And if so, only a slight amount. So again, that shows that the cooler is very efficient. So we've gone through a little bit about the cooler of the, on this card and a bit about the aesthetics. Now let's move on to the RTX 5080 stock specs. The RTX 5080 stock specs for a reference card, the boost clock is 2617 megahertz. This particular card here, uh, the TUF OC, has a boost clock of 2730 megahertz when you use it in performance mode on the BIOS. So that's another 130 megahertz approximately over what a reference NVIDIA design would have. And it just, that amount of extra clock, if you like, does give you a little bit more performance. The power consumption of this particular board was at a maximum peak when running all my benchmark testing, 318.4 watts at stock. So you would say like 45% less than the 5090 and more close to 4090 power consumption overall. The VRAM on this particular board is GDDR7 and it's got a capacity of 16 gigabytes. The memory bus on this board is uh, 256 in size in ter terms of the pipeline compared to a 512 what you've got on the 5090. And I believe this is what mainly lowers the performance when you compare it to 5090. This graphics card, however, discounting the bus does have enough memory on board for gamers to have no trouble to run games in 4K if they wish to do so, and also for the professional to do reasonably large scale rendering uh, and AI projects, again, so that if they wish to. We've now covered the look of the card, essentially, the cooling performance, and then a bit about the specs of the card or what you can expect the boost clocks to be when you run the performance BIOS. 
All that being completed, what did I do next? Of course, I put it in my rig and started testing. The spec of the system I used to test this card was at the Intel Core Ultra 9285K CPU, and that was overclocked to 5.7 gigahertz on the P cores and 4.8 gigahertz on the E cores. The memory I had installed in the Asus Z890 Maximus Extreme board was G-Scale 8400 megahertz, and I ran that at XMP. The PSU I used for testing was the 8-pack 2000 watt PSU with the adapters uh, to allow it to connect to the 16-pin heel on this 5080. I also, as usual, use my standard WD850SN drive with the latest version of Windows 11 and the most up-to-date drivers for testing this card. As far as overclocking goes, which we'll get onto a little bit later, I use the latest version as of Asus GPU Tweak as it's called GPU Tweak 3 which is compatible with the card and does allow quite a bit of functionality. When testing this card, I was testing it against 4080 for comparison, just to see how much it improved generation over generation. So that's enough of the old waffle. Now let's jump straight into the benchmark scores and results. Firstly, I tried Blender, which is a rendering benchmark, and discovered that this 5080 was 0.8% faster than the 4080. In 3D Mark Firestrike, which is a 1080p benchmark, it was 4.5% faster. In Time Spy at 1440p, it was 13.4% faster. In Time Spy at 4K, it was 4.5% faster. In 3D Mark Port Royal at 1440p, it was 21.7% faster. In Final Fantasy Benchmark at 4K, it was 25.8% faster. In Superposition at 4K, it was 22.9% faster. And in Unigen Valley, at 1080p, it was 2.2% faster. Now, these results, I guess you can say, are very common to what we saw in the 5090 when you're comparing uh, the 1080p results. Obviously, at 1080p, it seems now that GPUs have moved on so much that the bottleneck is solely the CPU, no matter what settings you really throw at 1080p. Well, certainly, no matter what settings you throw in uh, Valley at 1080p or the standard Firestrike settings, they're not pushing the GPU at all pushing the CPU and you're not gaining any improvement for scaling up your GPU. But most people who are buying this uh, particular card are not going to be running 1080p monitors and are not going to be running uh, these older style benchmarks. But I just thought I'd throw them in there because they will actually help to indicate what you can expect from the older esports titles just played in normal HD. So they are still relevant. To a lesser extent, they are definitely still relevant. So what I found out, if you take into account all these benchmarks, is the overall generational gain was 11.9%. And obviously, if you remove the 1080p tests, it was more like 15%. So not a bad overall generational gain, but certainly nowhere near as high as what we saw with the 5090. So finally, and most importantly, let's look at how this card overclocks. The software I used for the card to overclock it was, as I said before, it was Asus GPU Tweak 3. And basically, it was a quite good software, I have to say. This one, more so than on the 5090, did allow the slider for the power target to be maxed out, which did give it a nice boost in performance. You could also obviously add core frequency and add memory frequency accordingly. And the RGB software uh, in GPU Tweak 3 was working well, as was the fan control software. Now, because I could add power limit and I could add fan control, I decided this time to max out the fans, which obviously made the system more noisy. But again, people playing are generally going to be using headphones. So it wasn't a big deal-breaking uh, situation for me. And what I was aiming for was to try by getting the cooling to as high a performance as possible on the stock air cooler, see what I could actually get out of the card. So what I did was obviously install GPU Tweak 3, maxed out the power target, maxed out the fan curve, and then tested overclocking the GPU core uh, and the GPU memory to see what I could get to the maximum. What I did uh, manage to get out of this card was just over 3000 megahertz on the core, stable through everything I ran, and that would be 24 seven stable for your average gamer. And the memory clock speed, I could add 550 megahertz to the memory speed, which is again, a fairly solid result. And it, very similar, I guess, in terms of maximum frequency and memory frequency that was able to pull out of the 5090. What this resulted in was 2.5% more power draw or a power draw of 326 watts, which is very similar to previous generations. 
With the fan set to maximum speed, obviously I now managed to pull down the maximum temperature of the core, this time to 53.4 degrees C on the GPU, and the memory temperature dropped to 56 degrees C. And I said, think with uh, better cooling, say you water block the card, um, th then you'll be able to get even better frequencies than the 3000 megahertz they achieved here. So it's showing that the card can scale uh, with cooling. Overall, when I was making these adjustments, providing I ran within the parameters we've discussed, I didn't have any stability issues, and the software, I have to say, was running flawlessly to make the adjustments. And of course, you could save profiles as well within the software so that when you boot up, your overclock's already enabled and you just get on with your gaming. So, what were the gains of overclocking the card versus stock? In Blender, the rendering test that I use to show ultimate performance in the cards in professional workstations gave a 3.3% improvement. In Firestrike, again at 1080p, we saw nothing, no surprise there. In TimeSpy at 1440p, we saw 5.1%. In TimeSpy at 4K, we saw 5.7%. In Port Royal at 1440p, we saw 5.4%. In Port Royal at 4K, we saw 5.6%. In Final Fantasy at 4K, we saw 6.2%. In Superposition at 4K, we saw 6.15%. In Unigen Valley, again, this is 1080p, we saw 1.7%. And finally, in Luxmark Stroke Real Bench, we saw 4.5%. So, with all those benchmarks taken into account, we saw the overall gains of overclocking at 4.4%. And that's obviously including the 1080p tests, which we've already said are not really that legitimate here. What we did see then, if you discount the 1080p tests, is an overall improvement for overclocking of around 5.5%. So anything over 5% for free performance, not bad at all. And overall, the card was very easy to set up, very easy to overclock and very easy to come to a conclusion of where the maximum clocks lie and how best is to run the card for stability. So, in conclusion, what are my thoughts on this Asus Tough 5080 OC edition? Well, in general, I really like the card. The cooler is working very well. The aesthetic of the card is also great for my style of systems or the style of systems that I would put it into. And it's also very good for pretty much any system uh, that is black or monochrome or this kind of dark styling. How was the performance uh, of this 5080? Well, it was very good with about 15% improvement on the previous generation, which is, overall is not a bad win. Obviously, as I pointed out earlier, it's not quite as much as you got out of the 5090 by moving generation to generation, but the uplifting price is obviously less. So you can't quite expect that. How was the overclocking performance of the card? Well, the software worked flawlessly, which was great. I was able to adjust the fans, I was able to adjust the power target and everything with the RGB and the aesthetic was working well, which is good. And also that managed to get the card up to over 5% of extra performance from stock. And again, this is free performance, which is you know something that any user could possibly tap into. Uh, and they can boot this from when they first boot using the software and just get on with the game. And it's very unobtrusive. So great. To performance with the software, great code of the software there by Asus. And I, like I say again, the, the card was fully stable, so it worked really well. Uh, in my opinion, obviously the 5080 is, it is a good generational improvement, if not as good uh, as the 5090. Now with this not being a flagship card, it won't be included in our absolute upper echelon of systems, that being of course, the eight pack kit, but it will be included in many of our other systems and our pre-builds. So if you're interested in those, of course, check out our website and get your wallet out. And finally, don't like this video, don't subscribe to our channels, and don't waste your time checking out any of my social media. But do, however, watch my video on the 5090. That's a BAFTA nominee in the making if I ever did see one, and one of my finest pieces of work.